We turn now then to the section of the agenda labelled operational performance and to item 8, uh, which is the NHS England Corporate and NHS Performance Report. Uh, this is going to be a duet uh, sung between Karen and Matthew. So, Matthew, perhaps you might kick us off. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, so, uh, the report covers a lot of areas. I'm just going to pull out a handful that, are, that I think are worth noting. Um, so, starting with urgent care, um, for our weight uh, target, um, we remained at just over 90% achieving that target um, over the past, which has been pretty much consistent for the last four months. So we are missing still the 95% uh, uh, target. Um, emissions have been up 3.5% in, in, in the last month um, and up around 4% over the past year. Um, so whilst um, performance is, is good by international standards, it's still below uh, what we're, we're expecting and what, and what we require. Um, so to that end, we are now rolling out the uh, urgent emergency care plan um, that I think we've discussed before, and that we are um, uh, to put us in, in, into a good place uh, for winter, which has got some key elements to it. Um, partly it's around extending integrated urgent care that covers uh, ambulance services, 111 primary care, out of hours services, to enable patients to access uh, the right services at the right time. Um, Part of it is about uh, streaming patients when they come into the A&E department. So still two-thirds of patients who come into an A&E department have travelled under their own steam. They've not been sent by a GP or brought by an ambulance. Um, and a significant proportion of those people don't need the care that the A&E uh, uh, can, can provide. So um, we really need to make sure that we're diverting patients, streaming them to, to, to the right services. Um, and then we need to improve the, uh, the smoothness of flow through hospitals. So there's a focus on the management of patients through uh, neither dis discharging patients too early nor um, uh, keeping patients in, in hospital uh, longer than they need to be. And um, delayed transfers of care remains a significant problem. In, in, in July, um, over 6,000 patients were um, uh, 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 delayed, transferred, um, the highest since uh, records began in, in uh, we started counting it in this way in 2010 um, and 25% higher than it was this time last year. To put that in, in context, that's effectively two hospitals worth of additional delayed transfers uh, 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 that, that the NHS is, is, uh, is looking after. So, um, so a lot of work going on in, in, in urgent care. Um, a lot of elements to the solution, and I, and I think commissioners and providers working together to address to, to address those. In elective care, um, referral to treat standard, um, we remained uh, at just over 91% uh, over the last five months. That's been pretty consistent, just a little below the 92% uh, standards. Um, patients. Um, Completing treatment was 5% up in July and is 4% uh, up uh, uh, compared to uh, uh, the previous 12 months. Um, so the NHS is doing more work uh, than ever, uh, but hospitals are doing uh, less inpatient activity uh, than they've been contracted to, than we, than we are paying them to do. And so um, I'm very hopeful that with the junior doctors dispute coming to an end, we'll now see hospitals ramping up their activity, uh, uh, driving down waiting times, um, and, 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 and seeing uh, uh, the improvements in standards that, 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 we're, that we're looking for. Um, in cancer, um, we hit the waiting time measures, um, except from the 62-day uh, uh, standard, which we were um, at 82 and two and a bit percent against an 85 percent target. That reflects a shortage of uh, diagnostic capacity that we are in the process uh, of uh, of addressing. Um, and just, I'd like to touch on a couple of the less focused areas, um, uh, which I, which I think are, we should we should consider to be just as important. Um, we continue to uh, hit the standard for the um, uh, speed of diagnosis of patients with dementia, which is absolutely vitally important for those patients to be getting them into the right care and the right support that they, that, that they need. And so the NHS is, do is doing a good job there. 
Um, and the total number of patients with uh, learning disabilities who are in hospital and who could be being uh, managed in more appropriate settings and getting back freedom into, in, into their lives has continued to fall. And that, that's a, a focus across the NHS at the moment to make sure that that, that, that group of patients get, gets the care that, that they need. So work going on across the board, but we've got some real work to do, to, particularly on the uh, urgent care standards and the uh, uh, and elective access to get ourselves up to uh, to where we need to be. Thank you very much. Let me take any uh, queries, comments to Matthew before we move on to Karen's part of the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Karen. Uh, yes, thank you. I, I, I wasn't going to talk to the main report. It's a um, it's a normal update on our corporate. Uh, programs and our corporate risks, but I did just want to flag uh, one risk that we are uh, reporting this time under under performance issue, which relates to primary care services, which, uh, as you know, we uh, contracted with Capita to run those support services in uh, September last year, and after the first few months uh, uh, where we had uh, good service. Uh, we started to, Capita started to hit problems with the way that they uh, delivered those services and that has um, escalated over the summer so we do have some unacceptable levels of performance in primary care support. Um, Capita and we both think this is unacceptable and are committed to recovering those services um, and are working to do that and we're working very closely with them to ensure that they have good recovery plans and do uh, start to hit the, the targets and service expectations that we set for them. Um, I just want to recognise that obviously this has um, impacts for users uh, which include, of course, primary care contractors, GPs, ophthalmic and uh, dental practitioners and uh, recognise that that's um, difficult uh, for all those users and indeed creating some risks for patients as well. So we are doing everything we can to make sure that we escalate and address the risks, particularly for patients and we will be uh, communicating with practitioners how we are planning on uh, with Capita to try to improve services as quickly as possible. Well, thank you, Karen. As you know, the board um, takes this extremely gravely. Uh, when we say unacceptable, we mean unacceptable. I think we need to pay tribute to you and the team for the huge amount of work and effort that has gone into trying to ensure that people aren't harmed by this at all, and uh, to assure you that we, the board, will be tracking this as closely as possible over the coming weeks. We need recovery from this as quickly as we possibly can achieve it. Good. Uh, in the absence of other comments for Karen, may we then move on, please? We note uh, the, the report.